Welcome to another episode of Healthy Actions Intervening Responsibly, known as HAIR. I am Jacqueline, the founder. I am thinking about today that we can have a little conversation centered around play. Now, what comes to your mind when you hear the word play? Or when you think about play? Or even when you plan to play? Do you plan to play? Is play any part of your day or any part of your agenda? Or do you think about and talk about and plan play simply and only when it comes to children? Well, I've been challenging myself to put play on my agenda. So I'd like for you to think about what does play look like in terms of today's affairs of the world, the multiple things that we are experiencing as a nation, we are experiencing it as a family, or maybe even as an individual. Are you free to play? Now, I know a lot of times adults get play in when children are around. <laughs> yeah, lots of time when children are around. That may be the one time and opportunity that we adults might engage in play activities. So let's think about that and let's talk about that a little bit more during this segment. Play. You know, playing is one of the ways that moms connect with their children. Dads can connect with their children is through play. That is very often how bonding and connectedness takes place. So then that means play is very serious, it is critical, and it is very, very necessary. And it's one of the ways how we human can connect even with one another outside of children. Well, I have two toys in my hands with me today. And when I think about play is when it comes to toys and maybe the type of toys we buy for our children, our nieces, our nephews, our little neighbors, cousins. A lot of times those toys that we put in the hands of children sends very direct messages. And I wanna talk about this one first. What comes to your mind when this doll is put in the hands of children? Whose hands is it likely to be placed in? And then once this is placed in, let's say, a little girl's hands. What messages does she generally receive? Or what behaviors does she or may she naturally take on? Or how might an adult engage in a moment of play with the little girl who holds this doll? Let's think about that for a moment. Now, let's imagine um, if this toy, this doll, is put in the hands of a little boy. What are some things that might be said to him? What are some things we might think about him? And is there any chance we might engage in a moment of play when a doll is put in a little boy's hands? Well, let's go back to the little girl who holds this doll. Um, very often, little girls become um, caregivers early. I mean, early, learning how to bathe, learning how to bathe their, their doll um, that they're responsible for. And it treats it like as if it's a baby, a real baby. Um, feeding 
the baby. Burping the baby. Rocking the baby. There's so many times I've come across or in contact with little girls who would, um, during times of play, say that the baby is sick. And the things that they do to take care of this baby because they're sick. A lot of times we see little girls as they play with dolls, they change their clothes, they comb their hair. We see them pushing the baby in a buggy. We see them having conversations with their babies. So we can learn so much from little girls who is taking care of a baby. Well, I want to take us to another point is that there are many girls across this nation that have the challenge and the task and for some responsibility for taking care of real babies. I mean, babies that really do need and require attention, that really do need food to be fed, to be nursed, to be put to sleep, to be changed to be played with, to be talked to. And very often, little girls who take on those responsibilities or who are expected to take those responsibilities or to have those responsibilities is based on circumstances. Circumstances such as poverty, where parents have to be out of the household for extended periods of times due to work or school or medical reasons, parents living with a mental health disorder might be out of the household um, to care for themselves, doctor's appointments, some of the other reasons that girls might become caregivers and have to take care of real babies is because of substance abuse or drug abuse, where their parents aren't able to look in on the children and care for them as they should, as it is their responsibility. Some other reasons why little girls might be taking on caregiver roles is because of incarceration. Maybe a parent is incarcerated. Maybe there were a household of two parents that has become one parent because of incarceration. Some other reasons that girls might become parents, taking on parental responsibilities and parental roles way too early and way too soon could be because of, as this pandemic we're living in right now, lots of reasons Lots of circumstances are happening in the family all at once as a result of the pandemic. Leaving a child to care for their younger siblings. Another reason why a little girl might become a caregiver is because of domestic violence. Taking care of the younger siblings, protecting their younger siblings, even protecting a parent, particularly protecting their mother from violence and abuse could be another reason why girls take on parental responsibilities. And there's so many other reasons and issues that might put a child in a caregiver's position. I want to talk about the other toy that I'm holding right now. This one. And when we put this in the hands of a child, it generally says to freely play. What do you think when a toy such as this one a ball versus a doll. And this is not saying this is a case or, or circumstance for all. But there are some children and their families out there where this really is a real situation for them. 
socialization, how people become socialized, how our children become socialized. is something we really can give some thought to. We need to think about these type of topics. New sets of children are being introduced to the topic of adultification, which is where children are taken on adult roles and put in adult situations. And one thing we don't think about a lot of times is children might have those responsibilities placed on them, but very often they don't have the power that associate with those responsibilities. They aren't given the authority that associates with those responsibilities. So back to this toy. When we put this in the hands of children, particularly boys, it's a clear message to play, to run, to have fun, to go for it. And it's usually boys, yeah, that we put this in the hands of or that we buy this for. And that we send in clear messages that it's okay to play. It's okay to be a child. Right? But a lot of times when we put this one in the hands of a child, we're sending messages of care for this, nurture this, protect this, feed this. Treat it as a real person so many times. A lot of times this doll uh, might be on the floor somewhere and a parent might come walk in the kitchen and find it on the floor and might call for that child and say, your baby's on the floor. You're not doing a good job taking care of your baby. Is that the way you're going to take care of your baby? And then a lot of times the baby is given a name that many family members address it as. And so a lot of times a family then becomes very involved, right? Involved in a moment and a time of play as it relates to this doll that affirms, that um, re -emphasize, that emphasizes and re-emphasizes this toy and how serious it is when we put it in the hands of a child. Do you know someone who may have been a child that may have been socialized? Hmm? Maybe were you socialized as a child? Were there expectations on you as a child? Were you treating your baby doll if you had a baby doll? Not everyone had a baby doll. I bought baby dolls for my daughter. She did not like them and she never played with them. She chose school supplies and school folders and pencils in place of toys. But there are some children who, um, who really like toys, and toys is a good thing. I, I, in my opinion, I think they're fine. I think they're great. But the one thing I do think about and reflect on is the messages that children receive or taught or told about play and the objects that are associated with playing. So what I'm hoping that we would do is to reflect and give some serious thought to the toys that we put in the hands of children and the messages behind them, the messages that we support, the messages that we send the messages that we're given our boys and girls, the messages that we're given as it relates to gender. Gender shapes our experiences in many, many ways. Being a black girl can certainly determine what some of your experiences might be or even some of the outcomes you might have in your life. Being a black boy might certainly shape the way you navigate the world. You navigate the community. You show up in the community. It can certainly influence and impact the way we show up 
Or let's just even say a child that doesn't identify with one or the other. And we do have lots of children who aren't identifying with girl and boy, who consider themselves to be non-gender, non-binary. How do we interact with our children when that might be the case? How do we interact with them when we're making assumptions about, well, girls want to play with dolls and boys want to play with balls? Well, how do we interact with children when a girl chooses to play with the football and a boy chooses to play with a doll? How are we interacting with our children? Well, I think we have some homework. Well, the other day, I heard someone say growth work. We will grow as a result of the work we do in our own personal lives, in our families, and in our homes. I say it's a work that's worth working for. It's a change that's worth working for. I think we have our work cut out for us. If we really want to see change for children, if we really want to see hope rise during this time that we are living in and experiencing all across our nation. Because yes, a lot of our children are experiencing depression, having suicidal ideation, Losing hope. As many of them are no longer engaging, um, coming in person, seeing their friends in person due to this pandemic that we're experiencing right now. There are some children who are really glad that they're in school from home. And I've learned a lot of reasons why that is. We'll talk about that on another episode of Healthy Actions Intervening Responsibly. I am Jacqueline, and I appreciate your time. Thank you for spending it with me. See you next time.